Um, first of all, Haifa, thank you so much for sharing your film with us. It's it's truly a gem. Um, but it's it's interesting because it marks a couple of returns for you. It's your uh, you've returned back to Saudi Arabia to make a film, and also writing for the screen for the uh, first time for for a couple of films. Can you talk about the genesis of how it came about, and uh, were these sort of conscious decisions you wanted to go back and do this, or did it just come come out of the process? Well, thank you so much, guys, for staying until the end. I really appreciate it. Uh, no, I'm. Um, I come from a big family. Writing this script is like, um, especially Mariam's character and her sister. I'm one of twelve kids, S siblings. My father was very liberal, but and it is only one, he never believed in polygamy. It is only one wife, but every time his brother will have a, a kid, he'll have one. <laughs> so number twelve was like um, she was a doctor. And very like uh, amazing, like uh, organized, and she had all her um, room like uh, color coded. And and number eleven sister is like a party girl, <laughs> all over the place. But they were such an amazing friends. They supported each other. They're so different, and they supported supported each other. And were they were always there for each other. And that is why Selma and um, and Mariam's character came from that kind of sisterhood between women who are can be so different, and but they are there for each other and I think it's a it's a notion we should cultivate as women amongst us we should really have this support and solidarity um, and one success for one woman is success for all of us and and it's always touching to see them together so that is um, how the the characters were, were where they came from and then like in Saudi Arabia is opening up so much and there is so many social liberties for women and I I'm, I'm sure there is a lot of questions in young women's heads how to do what to do with those liberties and how to move forward and how to position ourselves in relation to that and and hence is Miriam's character um, journey mm -hmm. excellent and it's it's a great film obviously a sort of challenging um sort of patriarchy and uh, the oppression of women but what i love about this film is it's so enjoyable it's so fun and there's a lot of great humor there were you always aware that was a sort of a balance you were trying to strike um you know writing the film yeah, absolutely. I, I grew up in Saudi Arabia where there's no cinemas. And um, the, f so for me, the cinema going experience is such a valuable thing. And I never want to make a film that it's, I'm self-indulgent with the, a long lens and only like people quiet. It's, I love those films, but <laughs> I'm not that kind of filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker who always thinks I love the audience. I would love it if they can laugh or understand that joke and tell them a story. Maybe they cry a little bit or have fun. And for me, the, the audience experience, I always write with audience in mind. And when, when I write a joke in, in a place that is so far away and so different in Saudi Arabia and I find people laugh, I feel amazing. I feel like I'm so smart. <laughs> like, I, it gives me that uh, self of like uh, accomplishment. And um, so, yeah, I, I for me, I see myself all the time as an entertainer. And how can I um, make a film where people can learn something about the world and where I come from, but also enjoy that experience and and um, and it is, it is just like um, it's fun, like for them to be in a film like this. So that is my always my goal. Yes, and the the cast, the, a lot of the cast aren't professional actors, um, mm -hmm. and I think they some stunning, authentic performances. But can you talk a little bit about how challenging that might have been with a with a few of them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, um, Mila is a is an, an aspiring TV star. And uh, I saw her some some her work, and I, I really liked her. She asked for an astronomical figure and personal assistant, so I had to bring her back to reality. This is an art house film, all right, Mila. <laughs> and uh, but she's after the first negotiation, she's amazing. I really love her. She's such a, and I have so much respect for women in Saudi Arabia who take perf acting as a profession because it is like. In the, in the conservative societies, like they don't expect women to be a performer, and always there is so much, like um, there is so much they have to stand up for. Not only their families and all, everything, but the whole society looks at them as um, they are not respectful, or they did, did something that is, you know, there is shameful, and 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 there is so much dignity. I feel. And, and and sticking with art and being a performer and 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 um, 
and believing in yourself regardless what the society thinks of that. So I have so much respect for her. And then we tried to find like um, the the sister who should be funny and ha like um, spirited and all that. And uh, Dai is a, an Instagram star. I don't know what that means. <laughs> she has a lot of like uh, small comedy sketches. Intellectually, I find them a little off. But what I liked is like that she ha she put herself out there. And it's hard for women to be comedians and and be silly and funny and not in, uninhabited. And I called her for an audition and she came and she gives the most amazing, like uh, carefree. And she wasn't, um, uh, she, she wasn't really afraid to be judged. She was willing to put herself out there. And also I found that very incredible and very touching. And that is why it was her first acting experience. And she's amazing. Like she's getting a lot of offers now. So if I ask her again, she'll be like, Mila is like, this is my list of demand. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> for her, it just comes from um, the character development for her is like, um, um, she she grew up and when her parents are musicians and um, she, most probably she was an outsider as a kid and she wanted to fit in, be a doctor and respected and cover up and do everything the society wants from her. And as she grew up as um, developed as a character, we, we see her claiming her identity. And for me, even as a filmmaker writing this film, it is important for me that um, women in the Middle East and Muslim women understand that is their face, is their identity and who they are. And concealing their face and concealing their identity is such a mistake, such as something that is very hurtful for our psychology as women. And I think it should come from us, like from me as a Muslim filmmaker, it should come from um, Muslim scho uh, female scholars who are re-examining a lot of the literature that um, has a lot to do with women psychology. I grew up in Saudi Arabia where, where Saudi Arabia was very conservative and a lot of the ideology is like, my body, I am as a pe I'm a piece of cake. And if it is exposed, there will be a lot of flies. So I have always to cover it. And that is such a destructive thing to tell a young girl. It is such a, and we really need to reconstruct our psychology as Muslim women. And we should not be the face of, 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 of like, we should be who we are. We should represent ourselves before than anything else. And, and individuality is very important. And when it comes to extras, when I work in Saudi Arabia, I work like almost like in a neuralistic style. Everything, it's almost like a documentary. It is not like in the West, you bring extras and you dress them up and you tell them and they they leave the, their personality behind. They, and, and here uh, the extras come with their personality and whatever they want to do. So I tell them exactly now, act exactly like you are in a wedding. <laughs> exactly everybody take their personality and bring it. And yes, in, um, in weddings, like uh, it is the, the big party where women can be themselves and have fun and joy. And, and when the brides come, the, the groom comes, they have to cover. Some girls, they don't want to cover. Like, you know, <laughs> it is a moment where they can sneak in and just watch and have fun and some of them will cover completely it is all about personality yeah no no women can, women can drive and also the dress code for women has eased up a lot in oh, saudi arabia brilliant. yeah okay. and the is it the movement restrictions that has that's also approved since you you yeah you and even women can drive now without uh, permission they can't travel without permission from the male guardian and can apply and a lot of people think it is like very common sense right it is something that is very basic but I think it allows women to have direct control over their potential, what they want. I remember when I went to, um, started working in Saudi Arabia and I was like a, just a fresh college graduate and I had, I landed um, a job in, in an oil company and I was so happy, but I have to to hire a driver to take me there every day and he's always late and I, he took a lot, a big slash of my salary. But it is, I, I never felt like I am, um, I can reach my potential, not because of my work or anything. It's all because of the gender restrictions around me. And now I think it's an amazing opportunity for young professional women in Saudi Arabia to make their best. I'm sure there will be a lot of family pressure if they want to go to like a, a conference in a country and travel alone. I don't think maybe sometimes their parents will say no or not. But still, it is such an amazing thing that they can do it and hopefully can, they can convince their social circle around them. Yeah, I think um, 
the society in Saudi Arabia has been segregated for so long. So gender politics is still not very neutral. It is going there. Like men and women work together now more and see each other more. But usually what happens, usually in Saudi Arabia, if a woman comes, comes in the morning and say, good morning and smiles, the man says, ah, she fell in love with me. She loves me. <laughs> that is simple gesture of kindness. <laughs> So I didn't want the film to go in that way. And I think it is it is nice to have, maybe she has a crush on him, maybe he likes her, maybe she likes him. But it is not the end of the world. It's not like every person you like and everybody you have a crush on will be the, the man of your life or anything. It's normal that like to have those relationships that just passing in life and going nowhere. And I think it is very normal. It is like, um, and I, I felt like it is it would be very unnatural for me that, that they... She falls in love completely with the first person who helps her and he falls, I'm sure he is in love with her or thinks she love, <laughs> she's in love with him. <laughs> but I think it is, uh, it is some separation is very neutralized, to neutralize love. Love, love needs work and a lot more than that. So, so next time, maybe we'll see you in the The sequel. Um, the film will be released in May and, um, and I, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker. People always think that I'm controversial and I bring a lot of issues about women and stuff like that. But they know that I do it with a lot of respect and a lot of heart. And I think it is to bring a change in a place like Saudi Arabia where there, there's so much happening and people sometimes are nervous with the change and all that. I feel it is important to be um, kind and allow people to, to embrace change on their own pace. And I think my role as a filmmaker is to create an atmosphere where people are relaxed to discuss ideas and hopefully foster that to change, not directly or indirectly, just like bring that, that, um, that atmosphere where people talk about a movie of, over a cup of tea and hopefully they talk about women and, and they, then they discuss their daughter's future and stuff like that. And I feel to change values, you have to do this. You have to invest in time and energy to, mm, mm, and I hate to say educate people, but give them the chance to self-discover and have this, um, because culture comes with accumulation of a lot of things, and part of them is film. So people appreciate that. They appreciate that I'm not very confrontational, and I, and, um, I don't try to expose the culture it is not my intent and my always my intent is to tell a story and and i hope to entertain people with telling a story and not to preach to them so so I'm, uh, that allows me to hopefully release the film in may in saudi arabia and and i'm sure there will be a lot of conservative people who think women should not make films and should not make films about women and stuff like that which we i i anticipate and i accept but i hope there will be also some some people who who embrace this message and and there's some girls who who will understand what it means to have a passion to be happy and hopefully they put them, themselves out there and maybe become singers or performer artists or or doctors or whatever they want and and fight for it because it is it is not like in the west you can do whatever you want and um, and I certainly I come from um, a very liberal family, but still my mom wanted me to be a doctor. I was like, it was a huge disappointment. I could not be a doctor and then engineer. I couldn't be an engineer and professor. I couldn't be a professor. It was going downhill. And then an artist was like, I don't, she was like, but uh, she's happy now and proud. So that is <laughs> what it counts. First female Saudi Arabia. That's pretty good going. Yeah. That's quite, quite good. That is why I tried to tell her. <laughs> Yeah, the industry is still developing and there is a lot to, ha to, to, um, to build an industry. You need a lot of training for people to come. And this film was a, like a co-production between Germany and Saudi Arabia. So there was a lot of like expertise coming from Germany and we tried to train a lot of people. But it was hard for us. There was no casting agents, no location scouters and all that. We have to do all on our um, on, on ourselves and recreate the, the wheel and a lot of things. And there is a lot of talk to to have film, film um, an academy for the arts and all that. But there is a huge hunger for film because film wasn't allowed for so long. So it is novelty in Saudi. So a lot of people want to go to the movies and the exhibitors want to show 
of course, all the Marvel and hero films and all that, and some Egyptian films like that is a full blown comedy, which is really very commercial. I think um, art house films or films like this that has, it needs to, to be nurtured. Like here in the West, like those films really need to have a niche kind of um, release and has to be uh, put in a way that is, you, you gather audience and you try to build audience around them. So it is very similar situation in Saudi Arabia. And, um, uh, uh, but it is exciting to see that there is funding for local films and, and we see every now and then a film that uh, did really well, but it's mostly like very, very commercial. And I think, um, the, mm, we need to have, um, this art house, um, cultivate this art house scene because it is really what's going to mm, bring the taste up. Like now we they watch a lot of Bollywood and a lot of American films and a lot of Chinese films. All those industries are very established and they are very much mainstream and mainstream always find its way to go to audiences. It's still we want to see films, British uh, independent film um, from Britain. We don't see a lot of that or Germany or French films. Still, that scene is, uh, is yet to be developed. I, I Italian Eurorealism, I would say it's a school that I follow when I go back to Saudi Arabia. I just feel like it is very important to bring a slice of life that is almost unfiltered. It's like a documentary. So you go a place and you change a little bit here and there, but you document the place that it is and you bring non-professional actors. And most of the time you you film on location and you try, you, you try to capture that kind of essence. And working with non-professional actors is, is a privilege. It's really amazing. The only thing that they, they didn't think, like learning their lines is part of the job. <laughs> like what? We have to learn all this? And then when we start blocking, like uh, like you rehearse and you block when you make a movie because you have to measure the light and the focus and everything. So they have to stop here. They have to move here. They have to say their line here. And I tell them, okay, you've got it. And it's like, we've got it. Sure, sure. <laughs> Once the camera starts, they do their thing. <laughs> but it's amazing because sometimes I forget when I'm rehearsing that they, in, in the culture, they have to take their shoes now because it is like respectful and they have to act in this way and they act this way. But for them, that is, they, they, if they, it's the camera is rolling, they have to give me the real and truth and essence. And it's such an amazing thing to, to witness, an amazing thing for me as I know this focus puller who's German and you can imagine after his planning all that, it's not going <laughs> according to plan. <laughs> But it is amazing for me is like to see to see them opening up and wanting to give me an authentic portrayal of who they are. And it is hard to do it with like um, with professional actors because they are trained to to embody a character. It is hard to bring them to a stage where they are who they are. And so it is amazing to work with non-professional actors. And, and that is that school I try to always mm, incorporate when I'm working in Saudi Arabia. Um, non, uh, Non-American act. Um, uh, um, um, directors, there's a lot. And um, there's a French film called The Cuties. I don't know if you remember, I, I can't, I gave her an award, I can't remember her name now. It's like, um, if anybody, <laughs> don't tell her, please. If there's any <laughs> journalist, please, <laughs> let's keep this in this room. <laughs> but she's an amazing, like, um, a French actor from a, an African descent, and she made this amazing film about a young woman who's um, discovering modernhood and what it means to be, uh, to grow with all this kind of Muslim heritage from that culture and be just a young teenager and in, in a, in a culture where there is so much hype and more, um, so much sex sexualization for teenagers. And uh, it is such a heartwarming film, and I recommend it to, to everyone. And there is another Saudi film, filmmaker called Chahedameen, I should know her because she's a friend <laughs> like and when I premiered uh, this the perfect candidate in Venice she premiered her film as well which called the scales great okay we're about to have to wrap up but can I just ask as it is International Women's Day yeah. who is the most inspirational woman in your life I would say my mother and she will be really happy to hear that, you know, <laughs> because we were always we don't see things. And uh, but but my mom, like um, 
Uh, and I grew up in Saudi Arabia where music and everything was illegal, illegal. And she loved to sing. She comes from this very controversial, like a conservative family who would never allow her to be a singer. But she, whenever we go to our family gatherings and everything, she will come with an entourage and a light veil, and like a <laughs> diva. And she will be the heart of the, the, the gathering. She will sing and everybody's waiting for my mom. Of course, as a kid, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> and I don't want to tell you when she comes to my school, who's a Taliban school in Saudi Arabia at that time, with all that kind of perfume and things like that. But um, it taught me what defiance is. It taught me what to be re true to oneself and hold to the values you create for yourself. So, <laughs> Lovely. I would say my mom. Aww. Very traditional from a Saudi girl, but my mom is very non-traditional. So you will love her if you see her. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, um, and I just want to say a big thank you to Modern Films who gave us this preview and they're releasing the film at the end of the month. If you enjoyed it, please do tell everyone you know. Our female filmmakers aren't just for International Women's Day. They're for all year round. Um, so please uh, support the film. Um, and also we've got lots of female filmmakers at the BFI this month. We've got a Celine Siama season going on. We've got Lynn Ramsey coming as part of the Tilda Swinton season. So please do come back. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Haifa.